Hello everyone. Once again, we are talking about the menstrual cycle. We have read about the menstrual cycle, the endometrial cycle, the ovarian cycle. And today I am here to talk about the clinical aspects of the menstrual cycle. We will be talking about the clinical application which you as a student should know that how to correlate the clinical presentation of a patient with the basics of the menstrual cycle. So first of all, role of unopposed estrogen. As I was talking regularly, what do we mean by unopposed estrogen? That means there is no progesterone. Either the patient is not having progesterone or during your treatment, you are not supplementing progesterone. So what is the action of estrogen? Estrogen is basically a proliferative hormone. As we have studied in the menstrual cycle, this is the ovulation. Prior to ovulation, there is estrogen and after estrogen, there is progesterone, right? This was progesterone, this was estrogen. So, if we are supplementing only estrogen, it will keep on proliferating the endometrium. As we have read in the endometrial cycle, that what is the meaning of proliferative? Proliferative means the changes in the stroma, the glands and the blood vessels. So, it will keep on going, keep on going and there is no progesterone. So, the endometrium is going to suffer. There will be hyperplasia of the cells. So, in any case, which cases? In cases of AUB, abnormal uterine bleeding, we will be studying it in detail later on. These are the conditions in which the woman is having irregular bleeding. If you are treating AUB or you are providing HRT, HRT means hormonal replacement therapy. So, which therapy to select for which patient? It starts from your normal menstrual cycle, right? So, if you will give unopposed estrogen, there is no check on the action of the estrogen. So, it can lead to endometrial hyperplasia. And if we still are not checking it, it may convert into endometrial cancer. So, take home message from this slide is whenever we are treating a patient, we are not giving only estrogen in cases of intact uterus. What does that mean? If a patient is having abnormal uterine bleeding, so we will have to give progesterone, definitely. But if we are giving hormonal replacement therapy, that is in cases of menopause. Menopause means cessation of menses, permanent cessation of menses. So if we are supplementing hormones in cases of permanent cessation of menses, we cannot give only estrogen if the patient has had a natural menopause. That means the uterus is still inside. If the patient had a surgical menopause, surgical menopause means she was being hysterectomized. In that cases, yes, we can give only estrogen. But in cases of intact uterus, we will never give only estrogen in the treatment. We will have to supplement it with progesterone. First clinical aspect of menstrual cycle. The next thing which is related to this is dysmenorrhea. What do we understand with dysmenorrhea? Dysmenorrhea means painful menses. Painful enough to cause the disruption of normal routine of that woman. Dysmenorrhea, all of these topics we will be studying in details. Right now we are only talking about how to correlate with what we have already studied. That is the endometrial cycle and the ovarian cycle. Unopposed estrogen was connected with endometrial cycle, but dysmenorrhea is connected with your ovarian cycle. There is something called as primary dysmenorrhea, there is something called as secondary dysmenorrhea. Primary dysmenorrhea is something in which there is no organic cause. Generally in unmarried nulliparous women, we see that there is intense pain during menstruation where there is no other cause, that is primary dysmenorrhea. And what is secondary dysmenorrhea? Secondary dysmenorrhea means there is some organic cause. What does that mean? Either fibroid or endometriosis or anything 
विच इज कॉजिंग डिस्ट्रप्शन ऑफ नॉर्मल मेन्सेज नॉर्मल साइकिल्स इट कैन कॉज अ सेकेंडरी डिसमेनोरिया हेयर वी विल फाइंड आउट वॉट इज द कॉज ऑफ प्राइमरी डिसमेनोरिया विच इज जनरली फाउंड इन स्कूल गोइंग कॉलेज गोइंग स्टूडेंट्स योर आंसर इज रिलीज ऑफ पी जी एफ टू अल्फा दैट वी हैव रेड इन द ओवेरियन साइकिल ऑल्सो एंड इन द एंडोमेट्रल साइकिल ऑल्सो दैट विद दिस डिक्रीज प्रोजेस्टिरोन वेन द ओवेरियन साइकिल इन द ओवेरियन साइकिल यू फाइंड दैट द कॉर्पस ल्यूटियम गोज डिस्ट्रप्शन सो द प्रोजेस्टिरोन डिक्रीजेज डिक्रीज प्रोजेस्टिरोन विल कॉज वेसो कंस्ट्रिक्शन इन द एंडोमेट्रियम and that will release pgf2 alpha there was release of prostaglandins three types of prostaglandins we have studied but the one which is responsible for myometrial contractions was pgf2 alpha is it is a potent prostaglandin it causes myometrial contractions and intense myometrial contractions can lead to dysmenorrhea so our idea behind this slide is to show that in a normal menstrual cycle also patient may got may get pain for this you will have to block at this place the release of pgf2 alpha which we do with normal non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs that's why nsaids are the drug of choice for primary dysmenorrhea next comes your mid ovulatory pain or mittel schmerz very commonly known very commonly seen but very commonly misunderstood also this is total total your ovarian cycle what happens in our no normal menstrual cycle there is lh surge a small progesterone surge after that lh surge and after lh peak 10 to 12 hours there is ovulation right during ovulation sometimes what happens there is sudden release of fluids from the ovary inside the peritoneum this causes the peritoneum to get irritated and it may lead to mid cycle abdominal pain and sometimes it is accompanied with vaginal spotting and sometimes it is not accompanied by vaginal spotting right so mittel schmerz or mid ovulatory pain the patient may come up a case scenario may come up that a woman was having regular menstrual cycle regular means what do you mean by regular that she was ovulating so during regular menstrual cycle sometimes she is getting a mid cycle spotting with abdominal pain is she having a disease no she is suffering from mittel schmerz or mid ovulatory pain next clinical scenario is postponement of menses as a medical student as a pg student someone may ask you how to postpone menses and what is the reason behind the postponement once again come back to our normal menstrual cycle this is the ovulation now what happens to progesterone it is like this so on day 22 to 23 the progesterone peaks and then it starts falling right once it starts falling the changes of shedding start in the endometrium so anything which will stop the progesterone from falling will postpone the menses i hope i am making myself clear so what could be it either the corpus luteum persist why the corpus luteum will persist in cases of pregnancy we know that the corpus luteum of pregnancy persists till 10 to 12 weeks so if there is pregnancy there is no fall in progesterone and there are no menses number 1 number 2 if you add on progesterone from the external environment in the form of tablets or medications the hormonal medications which can postpone the menses right so the addition of a tablet of progesterone from 3 to 4 days prior to the expected date of menses expected date of menses for say it was 28th so you add from day 25 because till 22 to 23 it was peak but from 25 it will start falling so from day 25 you add on progesterone and continue the progesterone till you want to postpone the menses right and once we stop the progesterone after a few days the changes are going to come the shedding is going to occur so if you want to postpone the menses 
add progesterone 3 to 4 days prior to the expected date of menses and continue till you want to postpone. Once the drug is stopped, after a few days, say 3 or 4 days, the changes of menstruation will start. Now comes secondary amenorrhea. What is the meaning of amenorrhea? Amenorrhea means no menses. Right? Menorrhea means menses, amenorrhea means no menses. So, what is primary, what is secondary? Primary amenorrhea means that the woman has not menstruated ever, ever in her life. That is primary amenorrhea. But secondary amenorrhea means the menses are being delayed by more than 10 days. Why 10 days? Because in normal menstrual cycle we have studied that it should come at least by 40 days, right? So, if it is not coming in a cycle of 40 days, it is a case of secondary amenorrhea. As I talked about it right now, most common cause of secondary amenorrhea is pregnancy because if there is corpus luteum of pregnancy, there is sustained progesterone in the body, there are no menses. So, if we are coming across a clinical scenario in which a woman who was menstruating normally earlier is saying that this time she has missed a period. Most common suspicion pregnancy. Go for a pregnancy test. If the pregnancy test turns out to be positive, okay, we know that the progesterone is still there. It is a corpus luteum of pregnancy. Then definitely it is amenorrhea and it is going to be there till pregnancy is there, right? But if the test is negative, then what to talk about? Why is it negative? So, if there is no pregnancy, that means the corpus luteum of pregnancy is not there. So, first scenario, either it is an evolution. What does that mean? That there was no corpus luteum, there was no progesterone. The whole scenario, there was no ovulation only. So, the endometrium is still in the proliferative phase and there are no secretory changes, there is no progesterone. So, there is no withdrawal bleeding, number one. So, how to treat that? We will have to induce a withdrawal bleeding. That means what we talked about in the first slide. Right now, naturally the patient is in unopposed estrogen. Due to any reason, there was no ovulation, so there are no menses. So, we will have to support progesterone from outside in the form of tablets. So, in a case of secondary amenorrhea, if the pregnancy test is negative, then we can give a short trial of progesterone. Just add a short course, 5 days is sufficient of progesterone and let the secretory changes start. But the withdrawal bleeding, that is the menses will not be immediate because you have given a short course, it will take time to act on the endometrium which was in proliferative phase and it was being primed with estrogen. Now, the progesterone will act on it and then there will be a withdrawal bleeding say after a couple of days or 7 to 10 days. So, a case of secondary amenorrhea evaluation, first of all pregnancy test. If the pregnancy test is positive, the scenario is clear. If it is negative, just go for a short course of progesterone. Now, an ovulatory irregular bleeding. What does that mean? Earlier, it was being called as menometroregia, but now the terminologies are being changed. We will be talking about it in very, very much detail in cases in when we will be studying abnormal uterine bleeding. But here, what I wanted to emphasize is that if there is no ovulation, then the whole menstrual cycle is not there. So, if the whole menstrual cycle is not there, the endometrium will be continuously under the proliferative changes of the estrogen. Now, the proliferative changes of the estrogen, so the stroma, the glands and the blood vessels will keep on going proliferative changes and there is no progesterone to stop it. So, what happens in such cases? A few days it is secondary amenorrhea. If still there is no progesterone, that the natural progesterone is not there and we have not supplemented even, then this highly proliferated endometrium sheds itself on its own because it is not able to maintain on that quantity of estrogen. But it will not shed at once. It will be a small shedding and then it will keep on growing. 
then a small shedding, then it will keep on growing. So, the patient will complain that I am having infrequent menses, but it is spot, spot, spot going on. I am not clearing off. So, that means anovulatory irregular bleeding. So, because it is an only estrogen environment. So, what do we understand by breakthrough bleeding? There are two terms, breakthrough bleeding and withdrawal bleeding. Breakthrough bleeding is in cases of only estrogen environment where the, the proliferated endometrium, it sheds and regains, sheds and regains. Whereas, in cases of withdrawal bleeding, there is progesterone and there is sudden shedding. So, these are some of the terminologies which were related to the menstrual cycle and these are the basic terminologies on which rests your whole gynae syllabus. So, from now onwards, we will be starting with all the pathologies of the gynecology and with this, I finish with the basics of the menstrual cycle and clinical aspects. Thank you very much.